Hi guys, welcome to a new video on this channel. Today we're going to be exploring one of the new features inside of ZBrush 2022, which is the Bevel Pro. Now, before you guys comment anything, yes, uh, we're in a different setup. The boys might be a little bit different. I had to go out of town and I'm recording this uh, somewhere else. So don't worry, we're, we're going to be back by tomorrow. So we'll, we'll just continue. Nothing, nothing important. Um, but yeah, let's talk about Bevel Pro. So uh, in the in the last couple of uh, versions, ZBrush has been introducing some very nice hard surface uh, tools for us to use. So I'm going to show you one right here i'm gonna go here into polish and dynamesh this thing so that we have like a like a dynamesh uh um, what's the word a dynamesh cube and the first tool that we have is the bevel arc and bevel flat uh, which was introduced in the 2021.6 if i'm not mistaken and these ones are very easy to use if you haven't used them before you just click on this one you make a big brush that helps you click on one point move the brush to where you want the bevel to end which is let's say about there and then you just bring the brush back like you don't need to like drop the brush you just like continue doing it and as you can see we're going to create a very nice super super tight uh, bevel in this case it's a round bevel of course uh, and we can do the same thing over here but let's say we go with the bevel flat so i'm going to go here click click and then go back and as you can see we create like a super nice and flat bevel so this is just one way in which we can use one of the new tools and uh in the last couple of versions we also got introduced to which one of the tools which i believe is one of the most amazing tools we've had in a, in a while which is the knife curve so control shift click and you have the knife curve in the newest 2022 we have knife circle and knife erect which we're actually going to be using right now uh so yeah so here's what i'm going to do let's say i, I want to grab my knife lasso and I want to create like a nice, like 90 degree cut over here. Like the only thing I need to do, sorry, let's grab the knife uh, curve instead. I'm going to go down, double tap alt, and then go uh, forward. And that's going to, as you can see, create a very nice uh, cut right there. And not only is it creating a cut, it's actually giving me a different polygroup, which is going to be important for the next couple of things that we're going to be uh, talking about. So now, let's say I want to use now the knife, um, knife uh, rect, this one right here. And let's create a cut like right about there now as you can see the cuts not like perfectly symmetrical even though I actually let me <laughs> I, I want to keep this symmetrical so let me go back there we go where's my front view there's my front view okay so let's say we want to add like a cut over there and then I'm gonna say a geometry modify topology mirror and weld so that the symmetry is like perfect as you can see there and then let's go like over here and let's do another cut like there as you can see we have this very interesting box so if we wanted to bevel this sort of things it might get a little bit tricky um because the the sides are a little bit difficult now in this case it shouldn't be that bad like we could use the the bevel arc and bevel flat that we've uh, talked about uh, earlier um because most of the lines are straight but what if what if we added like a different thing like let's say we go into now our knife or slice knife circle here and let's say we added like a very crazy circle right here in our, in our shape, like this, okay? So I am gonna do again mirror in the weld, so this is like as nice as possible. And like now, if we try to, to bevel this arc right here, it, it's not really gonna be possible. If I try to do, uh, again, like B, A, B, B, A, which is the bevel arc, like I can go across, but it's not gonna really give me exactly what I want. See how it kind of creates like a flat line and it's not following like the proper, like the proper section. So here, what we're gonna use is uh, we're gonna be using the Bevel Pro. So the Bevel Pro is gonna be found here inside the subtool panel. I'm just gonna hit Bevel Pro. And what this will do is it will open a plugin. This is actually a, a standalone uh, software uh, that comes bundled with Seabrush, but it's it's an it's another app, okay, inside of Seabrush. So so you're gonna see a couple of different things. So in, this is the interface, and it's it's pretty straightforward. The only thing that they mentioned during the live stream last week when they released uh, Seabrush 2022 was that this is using Vulkan technology, uh, Vulkan like viewport rendering. So that means that you need to have a compatible graphics card. As long as you have like a computer from let's say 2017 onwards, you're probably gonna be able to run this. But if you have like a very, very old system, then this plugin might not work for you. And the way this works is actually very, very simple. As you can see here, we're gonna have a blue line and a red line 
uh, indicating where the actual edge is right now. The blue line is where the edge is right now. And then the red line is the new uh, bevel that we're going to be creating. And this uses polygroups. So depending where my polygroups are located or where the polygroups stop, that's where we're going to have the transition from one bevel to the other. And as you can see, like we're pretty much like hogging all of the surface that we did with our cut tools very, very nicely. So here, there's a couple of things we can do. If the, the, the cut right here uh, was a little bit like dirtier, we're going to do another example in just a, a short while. You could use polish by groups here, which is the same one that you have in your deformation palette to uh, to fix it. You can also click this one, fix edges, to try and fix some topology that might be like working wrongly or, or not working properly. Uh, then we have the bevel amount, which we can change, as you can see here. And we're interactively, interactively going to see how this thing is going to be like changing. So let's say we want like a super big bevel like this one right here. We can change the, the the smoothness of the bevel. So of course, the more uh, smooth or the smoother the bevel, the the, the rounder this thing is gonna like be. Which in this case, I, I don't want to really do that. Uh, we can change the polygroup angle. This is to detect where the polygroups end. In this case, it's not really gonna gonna work for us. Um, we can do the mesh resolutions, which is the it, what this is gonna do. Pretty much, is gonna create the boolean mesh, creating like a very specific, like mathematically accurate bevel so that we subtract that bevel from the from the corner right there. And uh, finally, we have this um, uh, mesh offset amount, which is how like big or small the element's gonna be. So you can see here the, the preview. Again, the pink area is what we're gonna be like uh, like getting rid of. Now, you, you really wanna push this thing a little bit if you start seeing like those like weird pink lines, because those are like errors that you might get on your, on your bevel. So if you need to push it a little bit more, like, like what I just did there, uh, that's that's a little bit better. Now there's two ways to apply this. If you hit auto apply, this change right here is gonna be applied onto the mesh and the subtool that you had before jumping here into Bevel Pro is gonna be replaced by this subtool right here. If you don't hit this one and you just hit OK, you're gonna export this Boolean mesh that we're using to create this and then you could manually modify it. So I'm gonna hit auto apply. As you can see, the bevel gets applied to the whole thing. And here's where I would check to make sure that this is looking or working as nice as possible. And yeah, pretty much it, it was able to handle this nicely. We do have a little bit of an, of an error right there, uh, but nothing that we can't fix. And uh, as with any single tool, like things are not perfect. So um, in this case, let's uh, we can reset this. So go back or just reset. There we go. And then again, like uh, let's get rid of the auto apply. Let's try again, let's do like a smaller bevel, something like this. And again, what I wanna make sure is that we don't have like any weird like polygons, like see that one right there? That's a, that's an issue. That's why we had the, the, the problem right now because we're seeing that sort of like gray area. So there's where we might be pushing this thing like further out, there we go. Until we really, really, really like cover most of the parts. And then we hit again, auto apply. And there we go. So now we don't have any, any issues and you can see that the, the bevel, the bevel is working very, very nicely. Like I, imagine trying to create this super sharp bevel like manually with train dynamic and stuff. Very difficult, very difficult to do. So now I just hit OK, and I'm going to be back here. And as you can see, we have a new polygroup here. And the polygroup actually has a decent uh, like geometry. So if you want to use like C-Modeler to create like an insert or something, you could also do it. Uh, another thing that they showed, and it's, uh, it's very cool, for instance, is uh, let me control C. If you want to only bevel certain areas of your element with Bevel Pro, you can mask out uh, different parts. So for instance, let's mask out this like upper part over here and uh, we're gonna hit again Bevel Pro. And if we mask that out, it will respect the mask. And as you can see, the bevel will stop right there. It will find the polygons that we need over there and it will not um, like add anything uh, on the other side. So let me show you another, another cool thing here. So let's say we increase the, I think the offset amount is fine. We're getting a clean line pretty much everywhere. Let's let's make the bevel a little bit more intense, just a little bit more. There we go, something like this. And instead of hitting auto apply, I'm just gonna hit okay. And what's gonna happen instead is we're not gonna be getting the bevel. We're gonna turn on live booleans, and this thing is gonna be appending this very weird shape right here. Let me go ahead into into plus. So it, it creates, it generates this mesh that has the exact sort of like volume and, and angles that we need to subtract it from our shape and create the bevel. You can see that we do get a couple of errors here and there, so so we might want to like fix them. I think like if we were to do the live boolean, yeah, that would get a uh, kind of fixed. Um, but yeah, like if you want to do it, this is a nice option. And here's one thing, very cool thing that we can do. Uh, since this is a a relatively like clean mesh that we have right here, let me isolate it just one second. And you can see we have all of these edge loops on the center. So I'm gonna go B C M into the C modeler, 
and let's um, poly group. So I'm going to poly loop the whole thing. So let's do something like that. So we pretty much go over the whole element. And then I'm going to say uh, QMesh polygroup island. And we can like push this. Oh, let's polygroup. Actually, this. There we go. So we polygroup, we grab the island, and let's like QMesh the island out. Uh, no, did I messed up? QMesh. Oh, polygroup island, sorry. Polygroup island. There we go. So let's push this out like this. And as you can see, since the geometry is fairly clean, I mean, we did have a couple of issues over there. Um, if, we, if we were to go back to, um, to the object over here, we could technically, as you can see, create a nice little offset there, okay? Which again, would be very, very difficult to do manually. Right now, I know that the geometry is a little bit intense over here. That could be due to the resolution. Uh, but yeah, this is Bevel Pro, one of the very, very cool things about the element. Now, let me show you what would happen if we had like a more like organic looking shape. So let me grab a sphere right here. Let's say make polymesh 3D. Let's uh, geometry and dynamesh. So there we go. So let's say now that we grab our knife curve and we let's turn on symmetry and we start creating some like weird cuts here to get like a like an armor or something right like it could be anything that you want like each cut as you can see creates a different polygroup um and that's dynamesh so as you can see when we dynamesh one problem that we get is now the the polygroup island or the polygroup border that we have is no longer clean and this is something that you might run uh against when working on uh, with bevel pro so what you're gonna do here let's go bevel pro let's say i want to bevel the whole shape again in a very nice manner you can see that this is a complete mess complete complete mess so here you definitely want to use polish by groups and by doing polish by groups as you can see it will try and fix the borders look at how nice and clean this looks now it will try to fix the borders to create a very nice shape so i'm just going to hit auto apply and look at this clean clean shape not super clean you can see it's still a little bit wobbly over here and that's due to the nature of uh, of the of the dynamesh of course so if we were to like polish by group this a little bit more we might be able to get like a like a different result let me reset this and let's try it again so let's not auto apply and let's just keep pushing polish by groups now this will change the the silhouette and the and the um, like density of your object, so you might see a little bit like again of wobbly lines. Uh, let's bring back the re the resolution here, and let's increase the the bevel amount. There we go. Let's do a little bit of offset, so we cover the whole area. There we go. I usually like to go like I've been doing some tests in the last couple of days, and I usually like to go a little bit more than you might think, just to make sure that we don't get any weird like uh, results on the element. And yeah, just hit auto apply, and there we go. So just okay, and look at this beautiful element. Now from here, what's the next step? Well, there's a lot of things that you can do. Of course, I would personally go into probably like geometry, dynamesh, turn on polish give it a lot of resolution and dynamesh so now it holds the edge like very very cleanly and we can use and do a lot of the different things so super super handy tool guys super um super powerful to be honest because as you can see like try again try doing this sort of like bevels in a in a manual way and it's going to be quite quite tricky so whenever you want to bevel like a super complex surface this is going to be the way to go now remember this needs to work with polygroups you need polygroups if you do not have polygroups then this is not going to work i can try it right here like make polymesh 3D, and let's say I make a cut like this, but I hit Control W to make it the same polygroup. If I try to go here into Bevel Pro, it's not gonna work. It's gonna say this cannot be executed with a single polygroup. So make sure you keep your polygroups or you polygroup the things that you wanna do because otherwise this is not gonna work. And uh, that's it guys. Hopefully you found this uh, little uh, tutorial uh, helpful guys. It's a, it's just a, a nice little tool that we have here for our um, our new Seabrush 2022. If you haven't had the chance to download the latest version, I strongly recommend it. I do, I, I have found a couple of bugs. Like it, it does have a couple of uh, errors where it closes and it crashes, uh, but you know, it's the nature of the 3D software. So that's it for this one, guys. Tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, a couple of other tools here inside the new version of Seabrush. So hang on tight, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.